Hello ladies and gentlemen, Ken Chrysler here and welcome to another epic episode of WTF. It is going to be a Christmas special even though it's not Christmas yet, and, you know. But um, we're starting off with the Grinch here. He has just been released um, on probation. So, um, you know, after he stole Christmas gifts years ago, uh, you know, he finally got released. And uh, is he going to sign with the WTF roster? Perhaps. Uh, this is an interesting uh, um, move by the Grinch. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is the Grinch, and I am a convicted felon. It was years ago where I stole Whoville's Christmas in revenge of them making fun of me because they were insecure about their noses. I just want to say this. You all didn't see the full Grinch movie. You didn't see the end credit scene where I went to prison. That's right. I spent years behind bars. I even got shanked once. But now I am a free man and I am a changed man. And I am here to bring the Christmas spirit. I went to the grocery store the other day. And while going to the grocery store, I was getting a cart of, carton of eggs. And then I hear that song. That harassing song, that spiteful song that I keep on hearing about myself. Ye years after the crimes that I committed, I am still being harassed by that music. That horrible song by Thurl Raisincroft. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. That horrible song. And I want to address some of the rumors in that song because he is nothing but a gossiper. He does not know the truth. He says, I'm a heel. I'm a face now, though. I'm an obvious face now. I'm back with the Christmas spirit. He says, I have termites in my smile. Is he my dentist? Is he a dental hygienist? Has he worked on my teeth before? You know, I may live in a cave, but I use Colgate and I rinse my teeth with Listerine. So what does he know about my teeth? He calls me a seasick crocodile. What is that supposed to mean? A crocodile in a boat that gets sick? Really, Thurl? How about you become a better lyricist? How about that, Thurl? And don't even get me started on the other one. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. So you would touch me with a 40 foot pole. That's what you're trying to say. Why is it 39 and a half? I wouldn't touch you with a one-foot pole. Thurl, you better stop this because I have recently signed with WTF and there's a reason why I'm here. I'm here to make money so I can get lawyers and sue you in court because you have no right to harass me. Every time I go to the grocery store, I hear that song, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Well, you wonder why I'm mean? I'll tell you why I'm mean because you won't stop singing about me. Thurl. And I just want to say this. You all have been warned. I'm not stealing Christmas this year. But Johnny Thief and Gargano is going to try. And Johnny Thief and Gargano, I want you to come down to this ring so I can show these people that I have Christmas spirit. That I am going to redeem their Christmas because I know you, J Johnny Thief and Gargano. You're going to wait until Christmas Day. And then you are going to steal presents under the tree. Because you're a thief, Gargano. Come down to this ring right now. I don't think we need to be worried about the Grinch. Uh, he's a changed man, obviously. Okay, he's a little bit mad. Who can blame him? Okay, but we need to worry about this man right here. Johnny Thief and Gargano. And he's wearing a Nemo costume. So he's Johnny Nemo. What? <laughs> And he stole Steve Austin's four-wheeler. That could really uh, come back and bite him. Uh, but, yeah, the Grinch is furious. Of course, I hear that song in the store all the time. It, it, you know, it, it's it's a bullying tactic is what that song is. It, it's just flat-out bullying. And the Grinch is going to hopefully redeem himself tonight and save Christmas by stopping Johnny Thief and Gargano. Dressed as a fish. It's not Halloween. What is he doing? 
But anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Yeah, the Grinch is absolutely right, and, you know. Um, and I, I want to go over some of these lyrics. I mean, you know, what does some of this mean? I mean, uh, you have, you got garlic in your soul? Maybe, what if I go to Olive Garden? I may have garlic in my soul. I mean, what what is that supposed to mean? He has garlic in his soul? That makes him a bad person? Come on! Who, who's writing the, these lyrics? That's what I want to know. And, yeah, he called out the singer tonight. And, you know, it's about time the Grinch has said something about this. You know, he's never addressed this. You know, and this guy is making fun of him. That's it, all there is to it. I don't get some of these uh, these um, Christmas songs. I really don't. They, they, they drive me nuts. I don't like them. But tonight, the Grinch has one goal and one goal only, and that is to stop Johnny Thief and Gargano. Uh, from stealing Christmas. This guy is the biggest thief on this uh, brand I've ever seen. He will steal a hat off of a dead man. I mean, he is unbelievable. Um, which, I, I don't get that whole saying because what if the hat is real nice? It'd be better if they would say he would steal socks off of the dead man. That, that would make better sense because... There's not a lot of socks that are worth money. I mean, he could have a collector's hat. The dead man can. I mean, who knows? But Johnny Thief and Gargano trying to get a pin. By the way, we will have a rematch after this between Big Baby George Washington, Steven Seagal versus Plum, Darkness Juggalo, um, and Brandon. They're going to have a rematch. Last week they had that match. And uh, the tag team champions and the universal champion were not happy about that outcome last week. If you did not see that. And look at Johnny Thief and Gargano. Johnny Nemo. Oh, man, what a move. I don't know what in the world is wrong with Johnny. He's just, yeah, I think we, you know, need to be more concerned about him. And the Grinch is right. He has every right to be mad and angry. Um, uh, here's another saying. Your heart's an empty hole. What? I I mean, if, if that's the case, first of all, you're not his doctor. So how do you know his heart's an empty hole? But I know he has a small heart or something. You know, maybe he needs some medical help. Did you ever think about that? You know? Those people at Whoville, they're the, they're the biggest stuck-up people I've ever met. And look, and look here, the Grinch. Oh, man, what a nice clothesline there. Yeah, he has a heart issue. Why, why are you making fun of that? A seasick crocodile. I'm still trying to figure out what that's supposed to mean. Is that a crocodile that throws up on cruises? Like, what is going on here? I don't get the song. And, you know, Rudolph, he's just a doormat. We all know his backstory. You know, it's the... Rudolph's story we can all relate to. It's about people using us and only uh, um, people belittling us and then once they need something, they use us and love us. Once we give them what they want. That's what that whole song's about. So, yeah. I'm a little tired of Christmas. I'm not gonna lie. And the Grinch and Johnny uh, Johnny Nemo Gargano. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We're already starting off crazy here tonight. Grinch has got to get it together here. He's got a lot of emotional uh, weight on him with that song. He hears it over and over and over again. Just imagine if someone wrote a song about you and said you had termites in your smile. Wouldn't that bother you? That That's just... How do you get termites in your teeth? Termites go after wood. That's what I thought. How is that even possible? And the Grinch claims he has great teeth. So, he takes care of his teeth. And, you know, this guy that's singing the song about him, what is, is he a dentist? Is he a dentist part-time? This burns me up. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm going to take up for the Grinch. And, and you know what? He should have never went to prison because Whoville got what they deserved. 
They did. I've never seen so many so many arrogant people with noses that are bent. I mean, have they looked in the mirror? <laughs> it's like really. And here comes Johnny Nemo. And guys, by the way, we're gonna have that Fatal Four Way matchup tonight. Um, we're probably gonna have another Christmas match as well. Um, and it's going to be a good one. It's definitely going to be a good one. we got a lot of great matches, so I hope you guys enjoy them. Of course, we're going to have a rematch next after this of uh, Darkness and Plum and uh, Brandon. They want revenge on Seagal and Big Baby and Washington. So uh, we'll see if they can get their revenge tonight. It's actually going to be a rematch. And uh, another kick out by the Grinch. Zero to zero here. Look, nice move there by Gargano. And Gargano gets a point, all right. Oh, no, wait. No, no, no. We don't want that. Oh, no. Gargano with the first point on the board. How about the Grinch got one? Oh, no. Gargano is plotting and planning. Oh, no, no. Oh, man, and a kick to the head. And Johnny Thief and Gargano with a big move there. You have got to be kidding me. So the Grinch does not redeem himself. And that is not good for his first match as well. That was a, a, not a good, great performance by him. He, you know, Johnny Thief and Gargano wins tonight. And now Christmas is going to be stolen by the, the Thief himself. This guy still socks. He still zebra cakes you know he stole my ham sandwich out of the fridge the other day he stole a thing of mustard I mean this this he stole some towels toilet paper of course the toilet paper he didn't steal he put it in the uh, commode so you can't didn't know he put the paper towels in the commode so you can't flush the commode now just to be mean to the janitors Johnny Thief and Gargano needs to be stopped Plain and simple. He's wearing Nemo's skin? Like, how does that even work? He's half fish tonight. What? Yeah, I know. I'm just in a loss for words already. We're just getting started, too. And Johnny Thief and Gargano wins. That is absolutely ridiculous. And now it is time for their back at 205 Live. With Big Baby Steven Seagal, George Washington versus Brandon uh, Plum and Darkness. It's a revenge match. So we'll see if they can get their revenge tonight. They really were upset about, you know, it's it, you know it was a very shocking win for Washington Seagal. Seagal was incredible. In that match. He, he really had some incredible uh, takedowns. I uh, got a couple submissions, but uh, uh, you know, when you're a Universal Champion, when you're a Tag Champion, and you get beat by people that aren't even in the championship run, it really ticks you off. And um, uh, tonight, of course, Brandon, he's got to worry about. Uh, we've heard that Shane McMahon's going to be here next week after what happened with his father. Um, on the show as well so got a lot going on but Shane will not be here um, so he will not be here tonight so they don't have to worry about him tonight but he is going to probably bring an arc because he is mad the unemployment line says bring it on they, 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 they can't stand Shane either Look at Brandon here. Uh-oh, here comes a gut punch. Oh, gut punch to George Washington. And there's a submission taking place. Plum's trying to go for a submission. Washington breaks it up. Let's 
good to see that, you know, management has granted the tag champions and the universal champion with a rematch. But let's see if they can, you know, if Seagal and Washington and Big Baby pull it off again, then uh, we may see some number one contenderships coming up for these guys because they've been very impressive. And look at the baby. Oh, man. Top rope, that is 500 pounds. And Seagal tries to pin Brandon. Brandon kicks out. Brandon with a nice DDT there. Look at Plum. Oh, man. Didn't pick up that baby. 500 pounds. And thank goodness Brandon had all that armor on. That could have been really bad. And look here. Oh, man. Gets him back there. Good. <laughs> the referee, zombie referee gets knocked down. Look at Darkness. Nice move on Washington. He had a, rival, a rivalry with Washington way back when he was former Universal Champion. That was a great match those two had. And Darkness going for the pin here. Brandon's got a pin going on as well. And neither one get a point. Two kickouts. The last minute. And Seagal is back on that submission. Plum gets out of it. And there's a pin going on. I don't think the referee or submission. George Washington going for a submission. Didn't work anyway, but referee didn't even see it. And the baby going for a pin here. And a kick out there. And look at the baby. Darkness is in the ring alone. This is a good opportunity for the baby to capitalize and a kick out there. And this is going outside with Seagal and Plum. Tonight we will have our number one contendership to determine who will face off with uh, Plum at the pay-per-view. That will be three more episodes. Look at Brandon again. Oh, man. The poor big baby. Plum gets a pin. So, a nice pin by Plum uh, on Big Baby. So, all they need is one more point, and they will get their revenge. But it's going to be tough. Look at the Big Baby there. Got a big finisher on Brandon. And they're going for a pin now. And Big Baby got it. So, one to one. It is official. One to one. Next fall wins. Darkness, oh, what a move. DDT there, Darkness going for a pin, and Big Baby breaks it up. Just in time. 
And look at this. Look at this. What in the world? Oh my goodness. Look at this. Triple pin. Oh, nice. A triple pin. Oh, nice. Oh, that is the most exciting thing that it's had that has happened in 205 Live ever since they opened the doors of 205 Live. Let me just say. That may have been the best thing I've ever seen there. Oh my goodness. What a triple pin timed perfectly by the champions. And they take this one tonight and Community Creations uh, falls once again. And Joe Fixit has to be very frustrated. Uh, he did win week one, but they do get the revenge match. So, uh, they were victorious tonight. A triple pin. Like I said, the best thing I've ever seen at 205 Live. You know, I... Not that that's saying a lot, but, you know. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, that was pretty impressive. Awesome. Awesome victory by these three. Good teamwork, too. And we are back to our Christmas special, guys. So, oh, what's going to happen now? Oh, and here comes Santa. He doesn't look like a happy camper, though. Santa does not look happy at all. And you know what, Santa? Um, you and I have a little discussion to uh, make because last Christmas my son requested the game Outlast, a game that my son should not be playing. And uh, you stuck it under the Christmas tree. And uh, that's a little inappropriate, I think. So, after the show's over, you, me and you need to have a little talk. Because, you know, whether he wanted it or not doesn't mean he gets to have it. Outlast is a very inappropriate game. And you shouldn't be giving that to any kid. I don't care if he asked for it or not. But anyway, we're about to hear from Santa here. Ho, 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 it's Santa here, and I'm in trouble. I need to deliver these gifts in time for Christmas, but unfortunately, I've been in a vicious bar fight. I have two men that are trying to hunt me down. They're trying to steal my sleigh and kill my reindeer so they can eat them like deer meat. I need help. If there's a sub or anybody out there that can help me fight off these two men, I will help you in the future. Please, I need your help. So it's official. Santa is in trouble and he needs help. And uh-oh, here comes Iron Taylor to the rescue, who is, by the way, in desperate need of getting members together on a team. Um, if he could help Santa here tonight, he will have him in the future against Pixar Party uh, after what ha uh, the events that occurred last week. And the Iron Taylor is going full venom. And uh, Santa needs help. Who are the two culprits behind this? Is the question. That's my question. What in the world? What's going on here? Oh my goodness! What? Oh no. Oh, this is not good. And Iron Taylor and Santa are going to have one heck of a fight. These two men are crazy. The authors of Pain, or apparently now the authors of the North Pole, are here. Oh my goodness. And Iron Taylor and Santa are going to have to fight these two off. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. They tried to steal Santa's sleigh, and they want to use his reindeer for deer meat. I've never tried reindeer, you know? I, I don't think about stuff like that, you know? And we got the zombie referee back as well. So Either he's a zombie or it was so cold that his skin is turned completely white. One of the two. Um, but anyway. So it is Santa and the Iron Tailor versus the authors of the North Pole. <laughs> this is great. But if Iron Taylor could possibly win this match tonight, help Santa out of here, um, he possibly could uh, uh, help Santa out and have a person on his side against Pixar. May not be your first 
person of choice, but it's better than nobody. But my question is, Santa, what were you do? How did you get in a bar fight? You're delivering gifts to the bartender? Eh, I don't, I don't think that's what was going on. I think something else was going on. You met the authors of the North Pole in a bar fight. And then they tried to hunt you down. And now they've caught up with you. And you need help. got a great match here for the world. This is very interesting. And this will be our last Christmas match. So we will have the Fatal 4 after this. And of course we will have a promo after. So make sure you uh, watch that promo. Uh, but yeah, things have been very strange here tonight. On the uh, WTF Christmas special. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got to say. This is a two out of three falls. I don't think they can leave the ring either. So this is a complete dog fight between the authors of the North Pole versus the Iron Taylor and Santa. And look here. If the authors of the North Pole win, they get Santa's sleigh, all of his gifts, and they get to eat his reindeer. So yeah, this is a, this is a lot is at stake here, a lot. The authors of the North Pole are giving Santa and Iron Taylor a hard time here. Look at this. It's a beatdown. Vicious beatdown. Look there! Oh man! Like I said, this is a this is a stable versus you know. And look at this and an Iron Taylor with a kick out. This is a stable versus two guys that are, never have worked together before. And a kick out there by Sam. Grinch has came up short tonight with Johnny Thief and Gargano is, you know, plotting and planning the ultimate Christmas burglary. No, no, not burglary. Goodness, I can't say that word. <laughs> the ultimate Christmas break in and entering. <laughs> That's what he's planning. So just watch out, guys. Watch out this year. If you see Johnny Thief and Gargano in your yard, Call 911. Plain and simple.
Oh, and Iron Taylor stopping a finisher. Well, for a second he did. And look here. Oh, man. Santa's in trouble. They're both in trouble. And somehow Santa kicks out. I don't know how he did. And look here. And that is a point for the authors of the North Pole. One to nothing. The cam gets that point. Look here. Santa. Oh, what a nice break up there. Look at Santa here. Duplex City and Iron Taylor. Oh man, with a power driver there. Iron Taylor going for the pin. Oh, a kick out there. They were just having trouble with the authors of the North Pole. And here comes the other uh, Santa, and the other one breaks it up. They are a stable, so it is harder to fight them off when you're not a stable. Every time you, uh, every time Iron Taylor and Santa knock one down, the other one get, gets a big hit in. It's like these guys are really tough. They're one of the craziest tag teams. And Iron Taylor going for a pin, can't even do it. Can't even get to one. And Santa is at the top rope. But he's resting at the top rope. Uh oh. Well, he may go for a big move here. Uh, he decides not to. Coward. And don't even say you're afraid of heights. Huh. Iron Taylor going for a pin. Santa's got the other. Guy occupied in another kick out. Wow. It is one nothing. And look at Santa here. He's going for a F9. And oh, Iron Taylor with a big move as well. Santa going for the pin. And the kick out there. Can Iron Taylor get a pin? He's got one. So it is one to one. Wow. What a match. Both, each team has one point. Next fall wins. And there's a lot at stake here. Iron Taylor better watch out. Oh man, what a hit. Oh, what a hit. Look here, but nice reversal. Nice reversal getting out of that move. I tell you, the authors of the North Pole, they're going to get a lump of coal for Christmas if they lose this match. You can guarantee you that.
Oh, man. One of them just threw Santa across. Next fall wins. This is crazy. Absolutely asinine. Look at the Iron Taylor. Look at this. Oh, what a move. And Santa. They're trying to get these uh these guys down. They're tough. And Iron Taylor, look here. Uh-oh. Santa's got the other guy on his back. And look here. They did it. And the authors of the North Pole will get a lump of coal for Christmas. As they deserve. But like I said, Santa, you got my son out last for Christmas, which I did not approve of. So after the show's over, you and I are going to have a little discussion about that. Talk about what the meaning of mature audiences is. Which I don't have a problem with my son playing in games. I have a, a, a problem with him playing Outlast. Because that's not an M game. That's an insane game. That's what it is. But anyway, congratulations, Santa. Iron Taylor now has an ally against Pixar Party. And uh, also, Santa's reindeer are not going to be cooked tonight. So, nah. So, some good things came out of it. And, yeah. So, anyway, we are about to start our main event. So, I cannot wait for this one. It is going to be good. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the final match of the night. It will be Dan the Man, DJ Disney, um, the guy from Ratatouille, and Mr. John Ryan in a fatal four-way. Now, Pixar Party does have the advantage. Um, and basically, uh, they have a 50% chance of being the number one contender against Plum. Uh, for the Universal title. But Mr. John Ryan and Dan, you got to remember, we're a team at once. So they also have a 50% chance. So at the end, we'll, we'll see who can pull this thing off. This may be a Falls Count anywhere. I'm not for sure on that. Um, but, yeah. Mr. John Ryan throws the chef into the pole. Look at the chef showing off to the crowd at main event. And Dan going for a pin here and a kick out there by DJ. Mr. John Ryan now showing off in return. This is going to get interesting. Like I said, the number one contender will face off with Plum at the pay-per-view. Whoever wins this matchup. Look at Dan. Some nice punches getting out of that submission. May not be a false count anywhere. We will find out though. And look at Dan. Oh man. 
Strikes DJ good there. Going straight for the pin. And a kick out there by DJ. Oh man, DJ was about to go for a finisher on Dan and Dan just struck him hard. And Dan with the elimination very quick. DJ has been eliminated and we are down to three. So Pixar Party's uh, chances have now became even with these other two. But it is every man for himself here. And just to show DJ and uh, the Ratatouille chef, uh, they they worked together on this for as much as they could. They never struck each other, so there was teamwork going on, as I thought there would be. And look here, Mr. John Ryan with a stunner. Going for the pin. And a kick out there by Dan. And, oh, man. Strike there. Mr. John Ryan taking everyone on. <laughs> He earned a big spot last week, got the uh, subscriber team, the uh, moral victory against Joe Fixit. We will hear from Joe Fixit at the, at the end of this episode, however, and he is not a happy camper after what happened last week. Mr. John Ryan trying to control this whole entire match here. And uh-oh, uh-oh, look at this. Mr. John Ryan! Oh, what a nice move. And Mr. <laughs> showing off for the crowd again. And uh-oh, the chef gonna make him pay for that. Oh man, what a double Superman punch by the chef. And Pixar Party, he's representing Pixar Party here. So, this would be a big win tonight if he could pull this off. And look at Dan throwing him into the still steps. There, lays him out good. And look, look here. Well, oh, Mr. John Ryan getting nothing but knees to the face. Oh, Dan's gonna make the chef pay for that one. Going for the pin, and the kick out there. Dan is lining up a finisher here. And look here, Mr. John Ryan. Look, stunner, out of nowhere. Dan never saw it coming. And Mr. John Ryan has eliminated Dan the Man. Oh my goodness. And the chef now going for the pin. And a kick out there. Out of nowhere got the stunner. Oh, and a spear by the chef. Oh, Mr. John Ryan never saw that one coming. Oh my goodness, and picks our party. 
is gonna get the number one contendership for the Universal Belt. Unreal. And if Dan would have got that finisher in, perhaps may have sealed the deal with Pixar Party. Unreal. And Mr. John Ryan could have then applied the stunner on Dan and won the match. Look at that double Superman punch. That was insane. And this Ratatouille guy, I swear he's got a rat helping him kick out. Every time someone tries to pin him, the rat bites him on the leg. And he makes him kick out. That's my theory. But, yeah, number one contender now. So, he is becoming a problem. And guys, we are about to hear from, you know, upset, whiny Joe Fixit. And hear what he's got to say. He was going to end the night with a promo. Hello, my name is Joe Fix It, and I'm here to fix it. And I'm here to tell you something. The only reason why the chef has a number one contendership is because of me. I put him in that place. I had him defeat the Iron Taylor last time. But now DJ wants to claim him under Pixar Party. And the chef doesn't want to claim me after I... Put my neck out for him. Okay. I see how it is. I have a team now that's coming after Pixar Party. You understand me? You took my glory. And now I am here to take out the Pixar Party. But I want to first of all, since it is the holidays, give Pixar Party a gift. My friend, my good Italian friend, Reggie, is going to present my gift to Pixar Party. As you can see, DJ and Pixar Party, my friend Reggie, has brought you all a gift. And he is about to reveal that gift. And I hope you all enjoy it. Reggie, show them what they got. It is a die-hard coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Show him the pictures, Reggie. Show him the pictures. And as you can see, when I win next week, not only am I going to destroy Pixar Party, but we're also going to have a coloring session. A die-hard coloring session when I win next week. Now, I don't want to get too cocky because I haven't revealed the team yet. But since it's Christmas... I thought I'd give you all another early Christmas gift by showing Pixar Party who is going to be going up against them. Oh my goodness. And Joe Fixit has lost his mind. He is obsessed with taking down Pixar Party. Who is his team? What in the world? What? Ladies and gentlemen, it is the cast of Money Heist. The show Money Heist. Oh my goodness. And Pixar Party versus Money Heist next week. Helensky's here. Uh, pa Palmera, Denver, Rio. What in the world? And Joe Fixon has lost his mind. He gave out a color, diehard coloring book <laughs> to troll the Pixar Party. Him and his Italian friend Reggie. I don't know who in the world that guy is. Oh my goodness. Could this be the next biggest stable in WTF and the not only a threat towards the Pixar party, but also a threat to the subs? Oh man, the Money Heist team is here. And Joe Fixit has found gold on Community Creations. Oh my goodness. Next week they will make their debut against Pixar Party. Oh, man, this is going to be interesting. And Shane McMahon will also be here next week as well. Oh, man. 